What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale. And Father's Day is right around the corner. And if I got a promo code for you guys, go to CozyEarth.com right now and use promo code CE-Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, to get 30% off for those Father's Day gifts, those last-minute Father's Day gifts. Get them some joggers. These are the joggers. Got the crew neck, get the shorts, get the polo shirts, get the bedding. It's all there for you. CozyEarth.com, promo code ce Justin. And also, if you're in Austin, Texas, this weekend, June 15th on Saturday, I will be at the Vulcan Gas Company. Go to VulcanATX.com. I'd love to see you all there, Austin, Texas. I know it's hot, but let's do it. So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode. I am so excited. We have oh, an amazing comedian, amazing writer, performer. Um, I mean, I don't even know where to begin with you. You have earned acclaim from your work on <laughs> popular TV shows like Broad City and Younger. Uh, he's the host of the podcast, You're Making It Worse, with H. Allen Scott and Brent Sullivan, and also hosts the live show, Haunting Renditions, where he reimagines pop songs in a night of music. Musical comedy, the one, mm -hmm. the only, Elliot Glazer. Thank you. Yay! Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you're here. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Is this Just your in first time for Pride Month? I know. I mean, it is a Pride spectacular. <laughs> it so... is actually day 684. Oh my god. Of Pride. Did you do any of the Pride? I'm a library. I realized this week, like I'm, a, I'm a library Pride person. Go like, on. Like I went to a, <laughs> like long, quiet. Panel mm, hot. <laughs> there was a panel about like gay authors in the like 60s in LA. It was debaucherous, but also like so, so academic and like dry. And I was like, this is how I celebrate pride. Wait, the <laughs> the the book club was debaucherous. The 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 stories of the authors. Oh, like the 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 books themselves yes. were like uh the, they were talking about like Gore Vidal oh. and and like the black cat. The <laughs> they <laughs> talking about the black cat. It was it was so like NPR glasses, like nerd central. And I was like, yeah, this is my pride parade. This is A it. quiet night at the library. Just nerd kink. <laughs> what else? I mean, was there drinks? Was there like meet and greets? Nope. Over by 7.30, it wow. was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. I was like, this is it. No banners, no rainbow, just a celebration of pride, like red in like, just like monosyllabic, dull tone mm -hmm. by like some dry, you know, uh, 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 academic. Yeah, yeah. So boring and I loved it. But I mean, that's that's what I feel like what people don't understand and what I'm trying to educate people. They think it's just like, June, Pride Month, rainbows. Yes. Ka -ka 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 and it's really not. Everyone kind of does their own but pride. I think it is. What? I think it's that. You think it's, you're because scared of pride. It, it, it's just so all-consuming. Yes. It's so all-consuming that I'm like, oh, my God, like, I've had enough. And it's, yes. it's like we're a week in. But, yes, I, we all, we can all do our own pride, but there really is, like, one narrative for pride, which is cat, 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 cat. <laughs> yeah. Well, Land, our producer, was telling me before you got here that he went to the Huntington Library. Love it. And had a nice tea <gasps> in the Rose Garden. Oh, I'm honestly so jealous. They, I am They too. booked those out so far in advance. Yeah. I tried to book one for my birthday. I was like, I would love to do that. I've actually taken... Uh, my partner's mom to the Rose Garden for Mother's Day last Lovely. year. I love the Huntington Library. Love libraries. And I, I do love too. Afternoon tea. Oh, could you even? <sighs> oh my God. Like people are like, people talk about like buffets as being this like, you know, bacchanalian like, like feast that never ends. Just yeah. like, like the most primitive thing. I am f stuffed after an afternoon tea. <laughs> oh my God. My, like, if you want to turn me on, just say the words Peninsula Hotel and I am ready to go. Finger like, sandwich? <laughs> just give me like a a cucumber yes. crust yes. off square. It's perfect. Blah. It's perfect. And a, sco a hot scone. Hot a scone. A hot small scone with jams and clotted cream. I'm uh, horny. <laughs> a, I know. A woman with vulture-like tendrils playing a harp. She, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, it's the best. I, there, the last time I went there, there was a woman and she had like her, her fingers were so just like wooden roots. Yes, yes. And she was playing the harp and oh. she's like, I have to take a break. And we're like, where are you going? She's like, I have to relax my hands. So we were like, oh, go, go, 
go excuse yourself. Um, <laughs> That's but, I mean, so f- that lovely, was though. Lance Pride. We we did the L.A. Pride. Yeah, we did. You know, because I, I have think, to ask you: Is the, I still I get confused? Is the, there's the daytime festival? Mm-hmm. There's the concert in the park. Mm-hmm. Then there's another parade. There's a parade, and then there's another festival. In a different, I don't know. It's what, exhausting. But which part is pro, which part did you go to? Well, last week was West Hollywood Pride. Okay, I went to that as part of the day festival. Yes, with the could, out events. Did you go to Kylie Minogue? No, no, no. I just oh, I was like, where can I bring my dog? Okay, and that was the outdoor stretch of Santa Monica, which I was like, I can do this. I went early. Yeah. I felt like I put in my time. Mm-hmm. You reclaimed your time. <laughs> and that was, I was doing my due diligence. Yes. But no, I didn't, I couldn't. Honestly, like, if you can't bring a, a, an emotional support animal to the concert, I'm not going. Well, <laughs> I did the same thing yesterday. Oh. I took Frida Pepita to her first Pride. Oh. Um, and what happened was WeHo and L.A., they had it with each other. Okay. And so WeHo and LA split because Pride is all about what? Unity. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, this is where I was confused, but okay. So one weekend is West Hollywood. The following weekend is LA. And even though West Hollywood is in LA, but yeah. it's its own city within the within the larger city. Correct, yeah. So WeHo did their own thing. And I have to say, after the two, I have notes. okay. WeHo Pride knocked it out of the park with their concert series. You had Adam Lambert. You had Kesha. You had Janelle Monae. You had Sophia Ellis Baxter, Kylie Minogue, Diplo. Oh, L.A. Pride. Vincent, who I love. Vincent. Love Vincent. Love Vincent, too. Um, L.A. LA Pride Pride. was downtown. L.A. Pride was downtown. With um, Muna, whom I like. Muna, I like Muna. Like Muna. What I want is one of my favorite songs. In the car, I will just fuck anything. I, I, they're phenomenal. Yes. And they also sing the I know that that's, one. That's yeah. the song. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but they also had Ricky Martin headline. Right. And I'm not trying to be shady. Ricky Martin, one of my huge gay awakenings in life. I feel like Ricky Martin. Sings like me when I sing. <laughs> the I saw some video. I saw some video. I was like, okay, I don't sound that bad at karaoke now. I get it. It's I, fair. Ricky I, Martin's "Living La Vida Loca" was is one of my go tos. Can I? So you think his vo- his vocals were s- s- lacking? Lacking because okay. I do think that he went to. Um, there was like some event he went to oh, prior before okay. and was talking and schmoozing okay. and all that stuff. Sure. And he's busy. She's he's busy. Palm there Royale is, press but is tour. There, there is something very ironic t- at this point to watching, I mean, I just saw a clip of him at the Pride, but singing only about women. Right. <laughs> I thought the so same fun. thing. It's just like, he's like shebang. So I'm like, Ricky, <laughs> stop it. The it's facade very, is over. It's very like, like nobody cares. Right. I mean, that honestly, that gives me pride watching that and being like, nobody cares. Like, yeah. Gay people show up in droves to watch him perform, and they don't care that it's he's still singing as if he were closeted. She's into new sensation. <laughs> just change the lyric. We you know. Could just change the pronouns. I would have loved that. Just yeah. He. Yeah. Him. Come I'll, on. I'll now. tell you. I and I think this was not an official pride choice by me, but I did. I don't like to see. I, I'm very picky when it comes to live music mm-hmm. as a performer. Same. It's, it's an, I'm annoying that way, but I like to see an artist who's who has a big collection of records that I'm really going to want to hear. I can't just go see somebody where I'm like, I like one or two of their songs. I went on Saturday mm-hmm. to see just oh uh, no, no, you not did Justin. It. Don't no, I don't. I, I, it what was a Freudian see? slip. I saw Janet Jackson. Okay, who? It started with a J, and I almost <laughs> lost it. Okay, how was Janet? Remarkable, of course, remarkable, and not only is she a, a, a truly like a, a an astonishing dancer, she sound she's singing live, and she she doesn't miss no note is remotely flat. Her breath control is second to none. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm literally I'm I'm agog watching her, mm-hmm. and so I will say it was just like oh then I saw the video of Ricky Martin. I'm like huh, he sounds mm-hmm. like a little little. Uh, meh. It was pride. Who like cares? I felt like I'm glad we're at that point now because 
He had to be in the closet for so sure, long. Sure. And now he's like— I have nothing but happiness yes. and joy for him. But and, Yeah, and Paul Morial was so much fun, and it was so great seeing him playing that role yes. that he would not have been able to play totally. back in the day. Here's a question for you, Just Sayers. How much do you think you're paying in subscriptions every month? I'll wait. And the answer is probably more than you think. Listen to this. Over 74% of people have subscriptions that they have completely forgotten about. I know because I've been there. I had two streaming services that I was paying for. I had two phone bills that I was paying for with one phone. Uh, who hates that? Two bills, one phone. But thanks to rocketmoney.com, I'm no longer wasting any more money on the ones that I forgot about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can actually grow your savings. I will get notifications sent to me pretty much daily saying I have upcoming payments. Uh, there is a strange transaction that wasn't identified. Is this actually correct? I will say yes, that is the correct Venmo that I spent all that money on Uber Eats. Um, it, was a, it was a hard week. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740. Yes, $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Money's tight right now, so stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions today by going to rocketmoney.com slash Saiyan, S-A-Y-I-N. That's rocketmoney.com slash Saiyan, S-A-Y-I-N, rocketmoney.com slash Saiyan. Start saving. Just saying. Totally. So, props to Ricky Martin. However, speaking of someone with one song... <laughs> Jojo Siwa. Oh, she played. Did she? At Carm at, at at she she was there. LA. Okay. But did she play? No. <laughs> she had the microphone. She was over in the UK before doing their pride. She held the microphone. She was giving everybody what they wanted. Um, the promo code went out last week for 50% off tickets. Got it. Um, she has invented gay. Got it. She has invented. Oh no, gay, gay pop, right? Gay pop. She and invented I gay think pop. Just being gay in general. Sure. Because, yeah. Um, and this is a picture of her, and I got some tea on this. At one point during her performance of her hit song, <laughs> Karma, she pulls out a bottle of Tito's and proceeds to chug it on stage, like most performers do. Celine Dion has done this in the past. <laughs> Um, Leona Lewis. Um, <laughs> the, the old Leon, Leona Lewis chug. I'm pretty sure Liza Minnelli has done it uh, I actually as well. Think that's probably But JoJo has taken, she has passed the Tito's um, and chugged this on stage. And everyone was like, hell yes, she's hardcore. Yeah. Um, I, I, did, I think it's a fun outfit. It's a cute outfit. I mean, it's definitely like, you know, rainbow bright, uh, Thunderdome, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but from a reliable source, I found out that this has bamboozled us all because there was no Tito's in the actual bottle. What? It's not vodka. It was water. Breaking news. She's a fraud. Now, Whoa. the reason this person said this was because after she took a swig of this vodka, there was no face. Right. She's just turned 21, and you're telling me that this little, you know, pixie dust dance daughter is going to take a swig of Tito's and not make a face? And I was yeah. like, and my friend also likes to drink, so. <laughs> I can was, honestly imagine her being like, you know, I'm queer, I invented gay pop, and I'm straight edge, proudly I'm straight, straight edge. I'm straight edge, yeah. Now, had she took a swig of vodka, thrown it to an open flame, sure. then I'd be like, okay, cool. Yeah, or made the face. Or made the face, like, of course. Yeah, but... She's like, I'm crazy. I'm drinking vodka on stage. She's, I mean, she's, she's, she really is. She, she's. I don't understand what she is. No one does. I don't know it. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I recognize it, mm -hmm. but I don't. I recognize JoJo, but I don't know what. What is a JoJo C? Like, I'm the, gonna the tell letters you. make no sense. You know, <laughs> it was. Jo I'll tell you what a JoJo Siwa is. A JoJo Siwa is um, what you go to. You go when Christmas comes around every year. Um, your dad would take you to a um, Asian gift shop. 
and you would search for last minute Christmas gifts. Mm. And the Asian man, he would have usually like a long white beard. He'd be like, we don't have anything specific for you, but come to the back. We have something special. And he would open up a small wooden box mm. and there would be a Jojo Siwa. Just dressed like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and he'd be like, I have three rules. Don't expose it to light. <laughs> don't get it wet. And don't feed it after midnight. You know, I will tell you. the. <laughs> the and then you take it home and your son or daughter is like, have this drumstick it's of chicken. It's a Jojo Siwa. After midnight, right, and then it evolves into this night terror, yes, wreaking havoc upon your neighborhood, <laughs> and it just multiplies, and you have to eventually kill it with fire in a movie theater. I, I, I don't, I, I, I believe that. I also believe that she. The one thing I know about JoJo Siwa is that my friend, like when she came out, um, in her in her comments, people started coming for her, mm -hmm. and she had the most perfect. She had the most. It was the most elegant, perfect response to anybody giving her shit. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw it. And somebody was like, you know, I'm no longer, like, I'm, I'm getting kids. I'm going to watch you, whatever. And her response started just being, okay. Yeah. Which is perfect. I don't know if she meant it to be like a snipe, but it was the perfect way of acknowledging somebody without, like, by any means validating what they say. And also just saying, like, I don't care. Okay. But do you think she's running her own social media? Um, I think she's making videos and telling her enough. people to say like, I, I don't know, but okay is the best response to, t if anybody it, like tries to give you shit, mm -hmm. the best response instead of like fighting back, you know, getting mad or, or doing anything is just, okay. Oh, God. It, it, it drives people crazy. That's the one word you could just respond to anything with. A and it's going to okay. drive someone crazy. And I love that Jojo was see what did, whether it's Jojo or her team, um, again, I don't know enough about... I, I'm just like, there it is. There it is. Happy Pride. There Happy it Pride. is. It really is. It's just like, it is, let them go. Yeah. Let them go. Because we're at this point, I feel like we're very attuned culturally to the idea of the child star rebelling. Mm -hmm. We've seen it. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why it, it feels like sort of a, a throwback that people are just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, drink your tea. Okay. Like, and I will say that because... The gays will get older. You yes. know what I mean? And um, they might not want to. They, they may will rail not against it, time. But we are. Yes. And that's what I noticed too, marching in the parade yesterday, because I, I I marched with the uh, Glamazon, which is the LGBTQ plus uh, division of Amazon. Ah. And my boyfriend's a board member for that. So he was like, we got to get out there. We got to support. And as I'm marching with my dog, Frida, who was looking fabulous. Love it. Frida was Beyonce. What did she wear? She wore her custom <laughs> rainbow pride tutu <laughs> that she wore on the episode with Mateo Lane. She was Love rocking it. it out. That was the soft launch. Yes. The hard launch was the actual parade. And people were losing their shit. What I, kind of dog is she? She's a King Charles Cavalier. Okay, so she's gorgeous. And she was just getting yelled at by yeah. people. And yeah. she was just like... Any King Cav, I mean, they're they're pageant queens. She did it. Yeah, she did. Like she didn't stop or anything. And she, we made the news. We made oh, KTLA. I as was you like, should. God, deservedly so. My dog is the blue ivy of dogs, <laughs> Frida. And it was just so cute. And like looking around and like looking at the youth, the youth is youthing. Tell me more. They're just like, they're just able to like be themselves more. Totally. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, like, I feel like, you know, we're we're older and, like, we kind of stick to our own age group and stuff. But when you, like, look at these, like, younger kids, you're just like, wow. Yeah. You get to, like, totally do just you. Do it. Just do it. I, I, yeah. I, I did the, uh, was on a float in the Pride Parade in New York in 2017. Mm -hmm. And it should tell you everything you need to know about me in that the whole time I was, like, weeping. <laughs> right, yeah. Just... Just all the people, like everyone's like partying and I'm just like weeping. I just can't, couldn't believe how much there was. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the youth are, it's, it's all about the it, Gen Z, I guess. Yeah. They just, they're just in it. They don't really have to, there's not that much to do besides like just come out and be. Yourself. Whoever they are. Yeah. There's, it's, it's wild. I'm yeah. jealous. I'm, 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 frankly, I'm jealous. I know. I think that's why we're a little like, oh, yeah, you yeah. kids. Yeah, you know, yeah. Late, late Jojo's like, I'm gay now. And everyone's like, okay. And I'm like, fine. wait, what? No. Yeah. No. You don't know. She doesn't you get to struggle. Know. No. Yeah. 
there's no struggle. I mean, I hate saying it. I feel like you're not supposed to say it, but... You can't say struggle anymore? That, that there is no struggle. Of oh. course there might be, but it's not... It's just, I don't know. The late 90s and 2000s were rough. Oh, I know. Rough. One of my favorite commercials ever is that Hillary Duff commercial where the girl is wearing the dress as the top, and she's like, that's gay. And Hillary Duff's like... Why are you saying gay? Like, there were, like, commercials, like, about... Oh, it was, like, a PSA? The whole thing. Like, everything. Oh. There was, like... There was, like, a smoking commercial where these two guys went into the bathroom, like, young teenage boys, and they're, like, smoking is gay. And you, like, think they're gonna, like, hook up in the bathroom, but no, they're just gonna, like, smoke a cigarette. And you're like, holy shit. I don't remember Do you these. remember the MTV show Undressed? Yes. Why? Was there... Oh, yeah, was there was, like, homophobic? gay storylines, and I was like, I am here for this. I don't know what it's about, but it's like, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the classic hit series Next with the Next bus. Well, unfortunately, Next was a real, a real, uh, um, uh, it really stuck in my craw. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it did us a huge disservice. Oh, for sure. Introducing, like, trashing, like, Toxic. It, equivoc it equivocated us, yes. unfortunately. It made us, it molded us. It molded us. <laughs> These horror shows getting I wish getting we could say the next to the next bus. <laughs> oh, me too. Even in, like, that, when they would get off the bus mm -hmm. and they, the guy, I mean, it was such, I can't even think about it now because it's, like, the idea of TV producers, like, like inviting 19-year-old oh, kids yes. into a bus and then being like, just be just be filthy. Gross. Yeah, gross. you'd see this like 19-year-old kid get off the bus. He's like, can't wait to wreck this hole. And Disgusting. you're like- Disgusting. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. would like have their bragging points where yeah. they're like, I can fart on kids. It's like, yeah. uh, too much, too much, yeah. too much. It was- Kids are classy now. Yeah. They I really think, are. Well, it's funny you say that because while we had- L.A. Pride here, the Governor's Ball was in New York City this Governor's past weekend. Governor's Ball, yes, on Governor's Island, I'm assuming. And they gave us Sabrina Carpenter uh, and Chapel Roan, who I'm obsessed with. She's great. Of course, I had to. I have to stop myself from calling her cha uh, Chappelle Roan. Chappelle, I'm like Chappelle, no Chappelle, which Chappell, would be Chappell, Dave Chappelle Roan would be like just a, <laughs> the craziest a, drag queen you've ever the, seen, the biggest oxymoron <laughs> ever. Um, but yeah, like Chapel Roan, I am obsessed with her. I've been trying to get like people on board with her. She is great. I feel like she is exploding. Yeah, I feel like she's stepping in the footsteps of uh, Lady Gaga. Absolutely. Like yeah. just the songwriting's there, the, the cosplay, pop, the pop, like the 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 camp, the her accent. Yes. Her accent, whatever that accent whatever is. Whatever the accent is, I don't care. Yeah. Sabrina Carpenter too, like she's kind of stepping into this like you know, kind of dirty, like girl next door. Yeah, Katy Perry. She, kinda, yeah. yeah. She's yeah. got the hit song of the early summer, Espresso. I feel like it's the first like song of the summer that I can imagine in, yep. in a while. Yep. Right? I agree. Like it's airy, it's perfect, it's light, it's catchy, it's wonderful. I'm calling the second one right now. Hot to go by Chapel Roan. H-O-T-T-O-G-O. Everyone's doing it. Okay, I'm listening. Oh, the children keep me <laughs> on. Um, but it is kind of funny because Sabrina Carpenter is doing these things now where she likes to end her songs with like a message. She did it at Coachella oh, okay. this past year where she, or this year where she was like, you know, have me back Coachella so I can headline. And everyone's like, yeah, let her headline, you know. And then over the weekend, she did a, I love that it just says pride nonsense outro. <laughs> so she said this during her ending of her um, her, uh, her set at the governor's ball. Okay. You take a listen. Mom, that won't shit inside me where I'm done small. People who hate pride can suck my gut balls. <laughs> we see you, Sabrina Carpenter. <laughs> She's so cute. She's so cute. I wish I could say <laughs> that my hole was dumb small. <laughs> <laughs> What's she talking about? We don't care. I love her nonsense words. You know why? Be I know. I, I, this is what happens when you have too much espresso. I you just start. That's so. What is it? That's me. That's so me. me that's, that's 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 that, that me espresso. Like. Delve. I, I love when pop music delves into like uncannily stupid lyrics. Yeah, I love it. That's like that make less sense. Song. I love it. 
That doesn't yeah. make sense. She literally in the song does like the Nintendo game Nintendo, code from yeah. like the 90s. It's incredible. What yeah. she says, Up, switch. down, left, right, B, A, B, A, select, start. I'm in. I'm so, I, she could say anything. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm in this. Mm -hmm. I'm into this. I love I, this. I will take this over like sad horse girl in a barn sure. writing lyrics. Sure, sure, sure. You know? I don't care. I mean, I have no problem with, with uh, Lana Del Rey or yeah. Tay Taylor Swift. I, I, I support them. But, she, there's something bright and fun in her, like, lack of seriousness. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, really, like, she's just, like, kind of silly, and I like yeah. silly. She's got a hot boyfriend, the guy from Saltburn, you know? Yeah, He's yeah. in her new video. Yeah, very handsome. And, like, you know, I just, I'm I'm here for, I'm here for this. I yes. like this new little crop of girls. Very much. We're here for the girls. <laughs> yes. All right, well, let's get into some stories. Okay. Um, are you a fan of Traitors? I'm, I started watching it, and I need to, um... Get back into it. The, Not all of it. All of it. I started watching this first season, first episode of the second season because that seems to be the one that really caught on. Phaedra. Uh, I, and I will get back into it, but no, I didn't. I didn't watch it. Oh yeah, you have to get into it because once you get into it, the first season's completely different than the second season okay. because they did half reality stars, half normal people. Right. And there was a, like, the ending, I think they were like, okay, it's just going to be reality stars okay. in the second season. Right. So the second season took off, became, like, epic. Yeah. I've only seen the American version. Did you hear me? I've only seen it. I've only seen the American version. People are like, you need to watch Australia. You need to watch Wait, the are UK. The ones, are, the other episode, are the other seasons in different countries with their own reality stars? I'm assuming so. Okay. I think there may be a couple one where they kind of play like around Brother with the normal. UK. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But, oh, people are like, you need to watch it. Um, but they just announced the third season cast, right. which whoo, I'm very, very excited about. Um... I'm not a big survivor person. Uh-huh. Um, I remember Boston Rob. I do remember Boston Rob. Yeah. Um, we've got Jeremy Collins, Tony Vlacos, and Caroline Who are those Weiger, people? I guess. Do you know who they are? No. Okay. Survivor. But that's what's great about oh, oh, traders. Oh, survivor. Okay. Because they're called the gamers. So they're right. the ones like the big brother survivor people are like in. So you're like, yeah. oh, they've got like they're tactics meant for this. and like yes. mind games and stuff like that. So like I was introduced to Sandra from Survivor this past season, uh -huh. who I didn't even watch that, but I was yes. like, ooh, she's good. Yeah, my friend who's a H. Allen Scott is a huge Survivor fan yes. and friends with K K Cameron. Cameron. Uh, and uh, yeah, they they have educated me in all things Survivor and Sandra is apparently Sandra's won it like twice and yeah. Parvati was Parvati, in it. Like yeah. she was epic. Yep. So, um, and then we have Big Brother favorites, Brittany Haynes, Danielle Reyes, Bravo. Here we go. We've got Chanel Ion, Dolores Catania, Dorinda Medley, yeah. and Robin Dixon. I know and Dolores it, and Dorinda. What's that? I know Dolores and I know Dorinda. Oh, Dorinda and Dolores. Chanel, I believe, is from Dubai or the Real Housewives of Dubai. Okay. And then Robin is from Potomac. Okay. I believe. I know Do yes. I, I, Dolores is like, I only watch... I, I watch Jersey because it reminds me of home. <laughs> I'm mm. from uh, Long Island. Um, and then Dorinda, of course, I, I watched old old NYC. Mm -hmm. um, I'm ex that's exciting. Dorinda is a, 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 gonna be good. a firecracker. I think she's going to be really good. We I all don't think... Do I, I, Dolores is too, seems like too reasonable a person to thrive in this strategic... Um, true crime esque, I don't know, like like surrounding murder mystery, yeah, murder mystery. But you never know. You never know. That's always a dark horse, you know. And I feel, and we also are adding, of course, Tom Sandoval from mm. Vanderpump Rules because yeah. he needs more TV time, apparently. <laughs> um, and we also have Britney Spears' ex husband, Sam Asghari. What's he like? What is? What did he? Do, what does he do? What is his... He is Britney Spears' ex-husband. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought that. <laughs> but I feel like he also was in, like, her video, but also I'm wanting them to be like, what's going on? Yeah, what, ha what is happening? What is going on with your ex? Yeah, tell, um, us, tell us everything. And we also have a British royal, love Ivar, Lord Ivar Mountbatten. Okay. Sounds and, like he uh, deserves to be in a castle. And why did they not mention Bob the Drag Queen? Yeah, they should, because Bob's going to be on it. Bob the Drag Queen was left out of this article. Former Just Saying guest, Bob the Drag Queen, wow. is also on. Bob's great. I'm giving you your fucking flowers, Bob. There oh, he is, Bob. right there. I love Bob. Um, 
I think Bob's going to kill it. Oh, Bob is a... I mean, sometimes, you know, I think I've become a bigger drag race fan over time. Mm -hmm. It's it's taken its time, but, like, I really enjoy it, and I love... I'm, I'm really in it. I love it. And Bob is someone who, like... Just across the board is so intelligent yes. and, requ- and re- is somebody who requires not just that personality, but a real intellect. And so you know he's going to kill it on the show. I'm really hoping that because I felt like Peppermint just got thrown under she the did. bus. Oh. oh my God. And I just want, like, I just feel like Bob is just going to go in and be like, I went on tour with Madonna. Right. See, I have a faint recollection of who won Season two, even mm-hmm. though I did not watch it, mm-hmm. I don't know who was on it, but the person who I think won was like, oh, right, that's a name from the past that I remember. It I'm not going to say, if it's, I don't know if it's a, a Who spoiler. do you think it is? No. Trishel? Mm. Okay. And from the real world? Yeah. Real oh. world Vegas. Oof. I know. Yeah, I remember. I Briefly. know. And CT. Oh, somebody else? Oh, he, oh. From real world Boston. Oh, wow. And they did like the challenges and all that uh, stuff. Are there afterwards. always two winners? I don't know. I think they, oh. I think, yes, because they were like the faithful. So as long as the faithful stick around, they get to split the prize. Yeah. So their job is to eliminate all the traitors. Oh. And then whoever the faithfuls are, they get to split the pot. Now he was remarkably hot. <laughs> yeah. Have things changed? Well, Boston is rough. Boston's rough, but it's also rough like city. CT, I feel like. He seemed. He also seemed unwell. Yeah, or, or maybe just like toxically masculine for the time. I think that's what it is. Okay, and also Boston is an aggressive. I'm really down on Boston today, but it's yeah. an aggressive place. <laughs> it is. It's rough. It's cold rough. winters. <laughs> cold winters. No, yeah, those are the tea parties you don't want to go to. <laughs> no, you know? thank you. It's just yeah. It's just like cool. But it, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this cast. I'm. It's it's just so fun. I love how everybody is just kind of like, who's going to be on this season? That's got to be gonna... a fun show to yes. cast. And everybody wants to be on of it. Of course. Every, I mean, it's and, huge. And um, MJ uh, from Shots of Sunset, I'm friends with her. She did it last season. Oh, wow. And so I had her on and we were talking about it. And she was like, would you go on it? I was like, MJ, nobody knows who the hell I am. She's <laughs> like, that's the best part. Like, you get introduced. Like, yeah. people like discover oh, you sure. from it. And I'm like, well, if they would ask. You, would you do a reality show? You know what? I would if it was just, if it was right. Right. I don't want to fight. Mm. I don't want to deal with. I mean, would you do a reality show? Would you do a reality show that was like the traitors and that there's competition? Mm -hmm. And or would you do a reality show that was about your life? Ooh, good call. Because they're very different things. Larry Baldwin's getting one. Listen. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if Hilaria's getting one. I I have... (laughs) I have thoughts. Uh huh. Go for it. Did you watch the promo for it? Oh yeah. Was it shot on a, like a Zoom? Yeah. In the pandemic, like it defies all time, logic, technology. It's a show that's going to be on TLC, but the it looks like it was shot in COVID mm-hmm. without like by their children. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm. It's so confusing. He looks. I mean, Alec looks like a prisoner. Yeah. He well, looks he, like. He's, I mean, I feel like he is, I, or he will be. One he, soon. He, he might. He may <laughs> will be. I. Are they? Are we supposed to be disgusted? Because I love kids. I like kids, but those many th- children yeah. in a room at once. I'm exhausted. It's terrifying. Something's wrong with. I feel them like and our- <laughs> Alec was like just get her out of here. Just you know get what her I mean? out of here. Give her something to do. Give her there a little project. Deeply, deeply unwell about a I'm, I'm shitting on Boston again. A woman uh. from Boston <laughs> who is an American citizen. Yeah. Who speaks with a Spanish accent, insists she's Spanish, has a thousand children, and then gives them all Spanish names. Mm-hmm. And they live in the United States of America. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. I have a problem with someone saying, Como se dice cucumber? Uh, how do you say cu- cucumber? <laughs> uh, Hillary, you know how to say cucumber. You know how to You're say it, You're from bitch. here. You went to NYU. <laughs> you, you know how to say it. Like, I, I'm I'm baffled by her existence. Mm-hmm. I, she wasn't famous. Then she... I don't get it. You're a yoga teacher, but you... Ma- it's, I, I'm it's, baffled. It's celebrity uh, John and Kate plus eight. It is, but that's that's the part of it that baffles me because, yes, if it were celebrity John and Kate plus eight, they would be lower tier reality show folks. Yeah. 
He is a Oscar nominee. Like he yeah. is an accomplished, brilliantly funny, intelligent, erudite, mm-hmm. a ch- you know, accomplished actor, mm-hmm. an actor's actor. Mm-hmm. And here they are, like scraping. sitting and pop, scraping, scraping the that bottom barrel. Of the barrel. That barrel is scraped. We're just the wood. We're just at the wood now. Also, like I'm sorry, nobody needs. A a, a, a a barnyard of children. Nobody needs that <sighs> unless you have a farm. Yeah, unless there's a farm for the kids to play in. But other than that, it's giving kid cult. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm gonna say till I'm blue in the face, and this is very Jewy of me, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm sorry. How do you afford that? You're not a billionaire. Mm-hmm. How do you afford that many children? That's, a, that's so many kids yeah. in New York City. I'm, I'm, oh, is that where they live? I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't realize that. Yeah, they okay. live in New York. And that's the other funny part, too, is that they're like, we hate paparazzi. They like they they go to battle with paparazzi, and they just want no, they want nothing to do with paparazzi. Well, you live in New York, you have a thousand kids, and now you have a show about it. Yeah. I am, I'm, I'll be first in line to watch. <laughs> and you know what this world needs more of? Nightmare children. Mm. That's exactly that'll what really we need. That'll really help. Yeah, that'll really Just, help. And, you know, put Northwest on the Hollywood Bowl oh, stage brother. playing Simba. That's Oof. what you get. <laughs> um, all right, a little more pride story uh, for you. Cindy Lauper wishes that she and Madonna were friends instead mm. of pitted against each other in the 80s. Now, I did not know that we needed a Ryan Murphy production of Feud, <laughs> Cindy versus Madonna. I did not know this was a thing. I would never have guessed. I thought... They don't fall into the same category. Not category, but I, I don't think of them as the same um, vibe. Agreed. Right? I I mean, I guess, like, in the 80s... she's no, She was, like... Uh, she's she so was unusual. Wild. She's weird and yeah. eccentric and quirky, and Madonna was, like, slinky and sexy and... Slutty. Right? Slutty, Slutty. Like, that was her thing. She was, yeah. I felt like Cindy was more like the unhinged. Yeah. You know, didn't she wear like handkerchiefs for like skirts? Yeah, and- she very famously worked at this like vintage store in the in the village. In yeah, like she and- was just that hey, you guys. Yeah, like yeah, real yeah. like real New York or wherever where's she from, from Jersey? Queens. Queens, yeah. yeah that like like, no, it's like you look good, you know? And Madonna was, like, more New York pop. But yeah. I, I never thought of them as rivals. Me either. Never. I, I mean, here we are now. Let's. I want to read a little bit of this article. So... I mean, I would fully watch that feud, the show. Well, who do you think would win in a, in a fight? Madonna. I mean, no, I think, I think you'd think it'd be Madonna because of, like, the brass knuckles type of gar- uh, of she take uh, the grill uh, out and put them on her knuckles. Yeah, I think of like her uh, accoutrements. Mm. But um, Cindy Lauper's from Queens and has just that street edge that I think she would knock a bitch out. Cindy Crawford, <laughs> Cindy Crawford, Cindy Lauper has connections. <laughs> I think that's what it was. I think she I would think, do it herself. I think Cindy Lauper would be like, "You're gonna go swim with the fishies, Madonna." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like your shoes in size sidewalk. Um, so, <laughs> um, so Lopper went on to lament the way she and the Material Girl singer were often considered each other's competition. She hmm. says, I would have liked to have a friend. Lopper released her debut album, She's So Unusual, in 83, the same year Madonna released her self-titled first album. Lopper's record included her hit songs, Girl Just Wanna Have Fun, and Time After Time, Madonna's album featured her breakthrough hit, Holiday. Yeah, I mean, they're both, f- they're both fun pop. Yeah, I still think like girls just want to have fun. It's a little bit more. It's a like a, a, a has a hint of like new wave to it. I agree. I agree. And but here's the thing. I think this this is actually what I was going to bring up. Mm. So I think this might have caused caused the feud. So in '85, Lionel Richie chose Cindy Lauper over Madonna to oh. feature on the charity song "We, oh, Are, we Are the, the World, World." Oh wow! Which he now admits to regretting. Why Lionel. her voice? Her voice. Her voice is so unmistakable on it. I know, but like, why would you say I regret having Cindy Lauper was like a voice of that era? Yeah, I mean, it was, and I and imagining her alongside. Did you watch that documentary about it? Yeah. Yeah, like, didn't she, did she, like, go tete-a-tete with, uh, no, no. Wasn't there, like, who was the most difficult? Oh, Bob Dylan. He was, like, very difficult. Oh, well, I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, of course, Bob Dylan didn't want to be there. (laughs) No, he didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be there at all. But, I mean, like, good for him. But, uh, Lionel Richie went on Jimmy Kimmel Live back in February, 
and said this on camera. Why did it have to be Cindy Lauper or Madonna? We had only half a line to sing. Let me say this now, half a line. We had to have voices that people knew right away. We didn't know whether Cindy was coming at the American Music Awards that year. I said, are you coming? And she said, I spoke to my boyfriend and he says he doesn't think it's a hit. And I said, don't miss this session. She showed up and killed it. The point was you have to have that's an identifiable thing. voice. An identifiable for voice is Cindy. Cindy had that and Madonna did uh, but not. But you would know, I mean, that's the other thing. Well, you would know Madonna's voice. Come yeah. On. I mean, but, but Cindy is unmistakable. Yeah. Unmistakable. She is, and Cindy says, she's just doing a thing. My thing happens to be different. Is there, can we, did, can we just scroll up for one second? Sure. There was a banner ad that caught my attention. Oh, what was it? Oh, it might be gone by now. It was just an incredible picture of a, um, like a Zoftig woman on the beach with a golden retriever. That's my vibe. <laughs> and it said something like, how long, how long will it take ladies with, four, like, how long will it take a lady to walk to, it was the craziest banner I'd ever seen. I how long would it, it take a lady to walk to shed 45 pounds? And it was oh. like, how long will it take? It was like, a lady? Mm. It was the strangest wording I've ever seen. Well, you know what? I feel like your vibe is library aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Land loves a good rose garden. <laughs> yes. And I am coastal. Sure. Like, that's me. Sure. I'm just a, look at me. And just like in my cozy. Yeah, I love it. Just cozy earth jumper. <laughs> Just on the beach with a book, yeah. with a golden retriever, that or far. Frida, yeah. Frida Capita. Oh, you think that was a that was a geared ad towards you? Totally. Oh, I love a okay. wind chime and a white wine. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? That's You're the me. Rita, the oh. Rita Wilson. Oh yeah, just a big floppy hat. With yes, just a, a picnic basket. There may be things in there. Maybe yeah, not. That's right. I'd uh, also watch a feud with Rita Wilson. Wait, what? I would watch a. Uh, oh, you would watch a free a, a feud with Rita Wilson. I would watch a Ryan Murphy feud f miniseries starring Rita Wilson, or and or I would watch Rita Wilson feud with anybody in real life. She doesn't feud, does she? I feel like she's probably ticked off some people. I don't think she's a feuder. That's her son. That's Chet. <laughs> That's Chet. <laughs> Rita seems lovely. I, I would love to. Like, I want to go see her. Have her. you I heard her music? Yes, I have. Take me to that concert. Come, Could you imagine? Come play Hollywood forever. God, <laughs> not. We'll, we'll get her out of the cemetery. We'll put her at the bowl. Give her the bowl. I want to see the bowl. Give her the bowl. Rita Wilson at the bowl. Her and all her famous session. friends. I'm so in. Mm. Just us in a box in the front with Diane Keaton. <laughs> oh my God. That would be everything. I'm in. Well, we're going to go back to Chapel Rowan. She dressed up as the Statue of Liberty at the governor's ball ah. to make an emotional state statement about freedom. So she came out of an apple. I mean, look at her. It's giving Gaga for sure. Oh, we're yeah. giving like, she dressed up as the Statue of Liberty. She came out of this big apple and um, she looks incredible. So She cool. really does. And she, I don't really know what her face looks like. That's I don't kind of why. Like, but I love that. Here's the thing. I am 100% with you because I've seen her look like Jinx Monsoon. Right. And Jinx Monsoon was even like, <laughs> Chapel Roan looks like me. But here she looks, she looks like, like... a hot uh, woman. She looks like, kind of like Ariana Grande like here. Do Doja Cat. Yeah, like a hybrid of yeah. something. Yeah. I love it. I love this chameleon aesthetic she's giving. Very much. She dressed up as the Statue of Liberty, and she says to the crowd in the camera that Washington, D.C., has invited her to perform at DC Pride, and she turned it down because she said, I will come to DC when there is equality and freedom for all. Ah. And I was like, okay. Okay, okay. All right, statement. Um, In terms of gay pride? Queer all pride? of it. Trans oh. rights, all of it. She said, I will show up and do your thing when you guys, like, do your job and do it well. I appreciate that. I think that's a, that's a bold statement. And a it, very I Gen was, Z statement. Very, and I was just kind of like, Oh. Yeah. They're more than just TikTok dancers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, look at that. She quoted a poem. Give me your tired, your yeah. poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Yeah, I appreciate this. Trans rights, that's wonderful. Yeah, she says, means freedom and women's rights, and it especially means freedom for all oppressed people in occupied territories. Mm. She said after getting visibly emotional. Yeah. Ah, oh, I that's love a, this. It's a very, like, new, like, futuristic, wicked moment. <laughs> Yes. She's Alpha, giving us uh, Alphabo 2099. Yeah. She also then followed that up with um that her her hoo-ha is dumb small. Um <laughs> <laughs> is that a is that so she's Sabrina was bragging about how small her vagina is? Mm -hmm. And okay. that 
the, the I, guy I, she's with is stupid big and it won't oh. fit. She's just like, it's it's a reach. But okay. it's not grabbing a bottle of fake Tito's and chugging it on True. stage. True, right. Um, so I'm very proud of that. So yeah. she she just made a, you know, she it's really an election does like, year. Yeah, she, gives, uh, she really does give early Gaga vibes. Yeah. And I say that as I went to school with... I called her Stephanie. Oh, you mean <laughs> Stephanie Germata? <laughs> Germanata. Germanata, sorry. Yes, yes. So you went, I didn't know that. You went to school with Lady Gaga? We weren't like friendly, but she, we performed in the same musical circuits. Oh. Uh, yeah. But you were one of those people that was like, Stephanie, you're never going to be famous. No, I was just like, <laughs> she's relentless. Yeah. She was just relentless. Like it was like, she is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And and like, but what's funny, it was funny because she was giving off like, um, she was serving like Nora Jones, Tori Amos vibes, like <gasps> at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But she was. I mean, I was in an acapella group at school. Like, still, you know, st I, I still stand for that. Um, as awful as that might sound, but she was everywhere. Like she just was everywhere. Die hard, just like, performing everywhere all the time, and people got annoyed and jealous. Yeah, but I was like, she like. But I will say, that all being said, she was very, like, earthy. Mm -hmm. And so when years later, uh, Just Dance came out, and somebody was like, look on Facebook, look at this video. And I'm like, oh, this is a cool song. And they were like, that's Stephanie. And you're like, no. I, 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 I genuinely was like, that's not S Stephanie Germanata. Like, it really was like a cognitive dissonant thing. And when people say, that's Stephanie, yeah. they mean it. That's <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's Stephanie. <laughs> what? Uh, I remember seeing Lady Gaga like at, um, it used to be the factory right across from the Abbey. It used to be the old like uh, Studio One back mm. in like the 70s and 80s. And they changed it to like- They talked about that at the library that I went to. They literally talked about that that at the library panel. It's the best. There's a documentary about it coming out. That okay, I cannot great. Wait to see. Excellent. Oh, incredible. I mean, it was pretty much like LA's Studio 54. Yes, yes, yes. Studio One on uh, Robertson and Santa Monica. So back in the early 2000s, I mean, like I remember seeing Erica Jane there perform for the first time <laughs> ever and be like, "What is this monstrosity?" But I'm here for it. Right. And then Lady Gaga showed up, and I don't even remember. Like I can't remember if she sang. Uh, uh, Just, love game. I want to say she might have sang because I remember being like, "Did she say love stick?" And um, or if it was Just Dance, but I was like, "What is this?" And yeah. she like did the thing, and all the gays were like, "What is yeah, this?" And yeah. then cut to oh like, yeah sensation. She's 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 relentless. I mean, she really has been. She's she's just got she's got a tenacity that was very evident even when I knew her very you know peripherally. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah, and it's that's that's where you're at now. Where like the kids are like, my influence was Lady Gaga, and you're like, oh, it's really oh, upsetting. It's really um, upsetting. Oh. Deeply upsetting. Yeah, you're like, oh wow, I guess that's where we're at. But uh, I did I did go to the uh, concert that's on HBO Max at the Dodger Stadium. Oh, nice. The Is it called the Dodger Stadium? <laughs> Chromatica. The Dodger Stadium. The ball. Yeah, the ball. And it was funny because I remember seeing we were watching it uh, a week or so ago because I was like, all right, let's just check it out. I remember all of it. But I remember while I was in the concert, I was like, if she says, put your hands up one more time. Oh no. And in the <laughs> documentary, like a lot of people are saying it. She says it like 70 something times. Put your She's, hands up. Oh, I, it might've been 40 something, but like every, every like without, if there was ever, ever space to fill, she'd be like, put your paws up. And I was like, we are like, we're here. Stephanie, we're already stop here. It. We're already yeah. here. Yeah. I will say the one thing I don't enjoy at a concert <sighs> and I say this with love because I, I love Janet Jackson, but even at the concert, there were moments where she really was like, you guys sing for a good <gasps> amount of the yes. song. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I want you to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite Janet song? Yeah, If. Ooh. Oh, if is, I'm a music musician and like a true music nerd, and I get really into like the technicalities mm -hmm. of it. And If is the most complicated it's the most complicated musical genre mashup that I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And it works so well and it's so sexy and iconic. But like when you stop and you listen to the harmonies alone, there are YouTube videos of her just doing harmony. It is confusing. Yeah. And it's just a work of, she's genius. Yeah. And uh, Kim Kardashian wore that. Uh... My friend to the concert told me she wore that Janet's actual outfit to the Janet concert. And my friend said, what an asshole. And I'm also like, can you just buy your own shit? Just buy stuff. Why do you have to like borrow everyone's like iconic mm -mm. outfits? 
It's just, not going to happen. No, no. Stop it. No, come We on. all know where you got it. We know. How sad. Yeah, we know. Ugh. Um, my favorite Janet song is probably... Um, Can I guess? Runaway? That's... That's Evan's favorite. Oh. That's Evan's favorite song. Mm. I do love Runaway. Love Runaway. Oh, I think, but it is on the same aesthetic. As okay. Like, I just like, like, um, Escapade? Under the, un, uh, of a Nairobi moon. What is just, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's Runaway. That's yeah, runaway. that is Runaway. No, but my, I think mine, there was a video and I always forget which one it was. Yeah. She was under a waterfall with like bright blue eyes. Again? It wasn't the again. Ballad? No, but I love again. I love that one. Yeah. But I think it's called Every Time. Oh, I think Velvet Rope Era. Something like that. I yeah. think that's when it I was. I love like that's my just me on the, the sand. She does that's what's the amazing about her. She has I mean the, the discography was yeah. endless seeing the concert. And it's like she has so much music that's all so huge, and so much of it is distinctly her. Mm -hmm. You know, and these albums were distinctly rhythm nation, mm -hmm. control. Janet. Again was, I think, Poetic Justice, like when that movie came out, I believe. Uh, oh, yeah. I, f I don't know if it was that or Janet, but... Yeah, but like, it was the a... same, that same, like, uh, and every time I'm in the car and again comes on, I'm just like... I will say that I think Janet actually got emotional when they did Scream. Oh, because of Michael? Because of Michael. Did and they we show him on the screen? They didn't. Oh. But she, she got, it looks like she got emotional. And I didn't, I also felt confused. Because why I, she got emotional? Why? No, I got. I don't. I get confused because I don't know what I'm supposed to feel about Michael Jackson. I know we're all at a loss. It's crazy. Yeah. Because I remember when he passed away. It was actually here. I was here. That or the. I got on stage for the first time. Or yeah, in the main room the day after. So he passed away June 25th, 2009. June 26th. I had a show here and got passed on the spot by Missy Shore. Mm. And I remember that night so specifically because it was a summer night and people were driving down Sunset blasting Michael Jackson. Yes, that was in New was York too. Such like a like, whoa. And then all of a sudden we're like, well, yeah. now what? Although his, his presence has always been very confusing mm -hmm. because even as a kid, he was, you know, ubiquitous, right? Mm -hmm. He was everywhere, not just musically, but like culturally. Mm -hmm. And he was so aligned with children <laughs> that that should have been a sign that like something's wrong. Yeah. Something's off. It's just weird. It's just weird. But then he also insisted that I was listening to Invincible after Janet's concert. And there's the beginning of the song um, that he does where it's an intro with Chris Tucker. Sure. And they're both talking about who's going to get that girl. And Michael is convinced he's going to get that girl. Yeah. And I'm like, you sound like no. Minnie I'm Mouse. gonna get that girl. <laughs> it's like she's mine. <laughs> oh no, 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 she's mine. It's like they're both like. He's like, I'm gonna get that girl, Michael. No, no I'm gonna. Get. I'm like, it, it literally is like Minnie and Daisy. Like, yeah. I, I'm. It's <laughs> you so have a strange. Peter Pan bathroom. Like, what are you doing? You look like Elizabeth Taylor. Like, you are uh, Elizabeth it's very, Taylor. <laughs> it's also confusing. His presence was so confusing mm -hmm. that obviously when the documentary came out, it was like. Ooh, yeah. Like with someone like Woody Allen, I'm not conflicted because he married his daughter. With right. Michael, <laughs> I'm less, I'm, I'm slightly less conflicted because it's technically hearsay. Yeah, it's not like we don't. It's not hearsay. Yeah, you built but, a pillow fort with Macaulay Culkin. Like it's it. just weird. It's over. It's it's done. But so. unlike Woody, like Michael's music is so good. Mm -hmm. Woody's music is not good. <laughs> no, Woody Woody Allen's music is it's not clarinet. definitely like on the. Uh, it's not. He's not gonna be your Spotify like artist of the year unless you really love jazz clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> That's his music. Oh God, my phone picked it up. Um, okay, we got more. We have some more stories. This this one is kind of um, a shocker <laughs> oh to me. God. Macy Gray. No, I know, I know. We don't mention her no. name enough. I know. Macy Gray has claimed that she got brain damage from the heavy head she was forced to wear on the Masked Singer. Oh no, I know. And now I'm not a big. I'm sorry, she was on the Masked Singer Australia. That's different. <laughs> I know, because I was like, wait, what? She was on The Masked Singer? I don't remember this. Um, no, she was on The Masked Singer Australia. Right. Um, and she passed out on stage. Oh, my God. In her Masked Singer outfit. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not surprised. I, I'm surprised that more people haven't passed out from those outfits. Well, it got so hot that she tried to walk away, but she stumbled. <laughs> She tried. She tried. <laughs> she really tried. She tried. <laughs> she fumbled. She stumbled. And they actually picked up her falling. And she said, hey! 
Hey. <laughs> um, so she says, they're so heavy and they're heavy on your head. I could have brain damage and I wouldn't know it. So she, this woman, Jackie Henderson, was a judge on the show. She said, I tried on one of those masks backstage. I couldn't believe yeah. how heavy they were. You know what? We had Carney Bolson on the show, and she was one <gasps> of the Carney. three little lambs, and she did not complain about how heavy the the. Well, a gig's was. a gig. Gig is the gig. Yeah, truly. So she was on the uh, unma. Oh, she was unmasked as Atlantis, the Sea Queen, on the 2021 season, um, and they tried. <laughs> the, uh, wait, let's see. Ju- the one of the show's judges, Dave Hughes, said at the time Macy had refused to leave despite being told uh, it was time to take off her mask. So Macy and say goodbye. Well, she was probably very dazed. Yeah, she said she had such a passion for the mass singer that when she was told that she had to leave, which you saw, she refused to leave the show. She said, no, I'm continuing in the show. And there had to be a discussion which went for quite a while as to, no, you have to leave. And she said, no, I'm not leaving. That sounds like brain damage to me. That is brain damage. Anybody I mean, have, having a, a passion for the mask yeah, singer? Yeah, you're like, like, no, I want to keep... Huh? Oh my, but how Valentina of her. She's like, I'd like <laughs> to keep, keep the, the mask, mask on. on. <laughs> Um, so the co said, so she still had the head on. They're saying, hey, Macy slash Atlantis, we need you to take the head off so you can go. She responded, no, I'm keeping the head on. Okay, so she took a lot of convincing before she agreed to take her mask off and leave. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It would have been amazing to see security guards come out, hoist up Macy Gray with her octopus head. That's her costume. Atlantis, the sea queen. <laughs> and hoist her off stage, like kicking and screaming. Yeah, but then I mean, I'd be watching the mass singer Australia. But she did pass out and hit her head. Yeah, that's so. terrible. She does look like in that costume, like that very bad, like Floridian folk art that you see at like I, that I see at craft fairs. <laughs> You know, like gangly garden gnomes, and it's like, oh, who's you this? had me at well, gangly garden for. gnomes. <laughs> that, for you. yeah, I love a Ren Fair <laughs> reference, um, which I will be watching that on HBO Max. Yeah. People are like, you need to watch it. I'm like, I will get there. You'll There's be there. Shows, but yes, it's giving like Mardi Gras, like Mardi Gras in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, Mardi Grunt, postmenopausal <laughs> mm. Mardi Gras, mm-hmm. Central Floridian, Central Floridian bathroom chic. <laughs> Yes. yes, just like a sea anemone. <laughs> it, but what is it? Is it a theater mask? Is it Harlequin? I don't know. I, I gays have to design these costumes. They yeah. really do. I'm I'm very. I've still to this day I don't understand. The mask singer is predicated upon the idea that we are supposed to guess the person by their singing voice, mm-hmm. which makes sense when it's a singer. Yeah, you hear Macy Gray open your mouth. You go Macy, Macy Gray. Gray. But when people on it who are like gamers or, or 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 like that is already so bizarre because everyone's auto-tuned yeah but then when they're like is it howard stern it's like no is it ina garden i don't no, know it's not ina ina garden's not on the mass singer that's yeah nick carter like obviously like it's nick <laughs> carter but like it's so strange to predicate the guessing game of somebody who's not a singer. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know if it's Patti LaBelle. Or like a football player. And you're of, like, what? You're they like, talk? oh, that's the beautiful dulcet tones of Rob Gronkowski. Mm. It's like, that's not possible. Mm-hmm. What a weird, what a weird mm-hmm. predicament. Yeah. It's it's I feel like it's um it's gaslighting. It, it I find it that. As a, as a, again, I think it's the music nerd in me that's like, no, yeah. this doesn't make sense. But I do want this flash forward to the future where Macy Gray is in like an asylum. Oh my God. (laughs) I see you. Yeah. She's in like all white. She's in a wicker wheelchair. She's like, I'm the Atlantis queen or whatever. And they're like, she's never been the same. What happened? (laughs) The masked singer. She wouldn't take off the mask. No. They're like, wheel her out of here. Wheel her out of here. (laughs) She's just screaming, Atlantis. (laughs) I'll see you at the bottom of the ocean. I'm not leaving. Uh, well, we have some more singing discussions. Ooh. Yes. Um, this Uber driver has gone viral on TikTok for surprising writers with karaoke sing-alongs. Oh. Now, I have very mixed feelings without, with, about all this. And you know what? I'm kind of here for it. This, this woman, Florida Uber driver, Linda Swan. She looks exactly like... A Linda exactly Swan. what I guessed. Yeah. Florida Uber driver Linda, Linda Swan, Swan would look yeah, like. Yeah, it's like she's got the hat, she's got the jewelry, the facial looks, work. Yeah, she looks like a fucking rich mouse detective. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, que- the queen of of uh, home goods. And- yeah, she she's just she's undercover. She just wants to see what everyone's up to these totally. days. Yeah, she doesn't even need this job. No, she just wants you know, to- of course, she doesn't need it. No, she just wants to like 
this is her cash cab. She's she's yeah. She wants to meet some folks. So she is surprising writers with karaoke sing-alongs that hit all the right notes on social media. The viral videos show the 63-year-old Tampa resident who goes by Lyrics with Linda on TikTok. Shout out Lyrics with Linda. Yes. Jamming to Low by Flo Rida sure. and Nine to Five by Dolly Parton with her delighted passengers. I'm gonna take a guess that they're not all delighted. There, there has to be. I mean, <laughs> if you're right. going to the airport, right. And it's an early morning ride. Girl, let me tell you. Are you looking for Linda to push you to sing low by Flo Rida? You know what? I Have you had an Uber driver like that where you get in the car and they are just living? That's L.A., not New York. No. Never happens in New York. Only here. I was going to LAX. This was years ago. And I got in the car and they were blasting... Um, Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. One of the best. One of the best. But at like 5 a.m., I was like... Wake, wake me up. Oh, no, I was trying I to wake up. To <laughs> Let me get my coffee first. But it was like 5.30 in the morning. I'm going to LAX. And I mean, full blast. And I'm just like... Like, my body was like, yes. Mm. My soul was like, shh. No. Just Amy. Shh, 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 yeah. Amy Lee and friends. Oh, it was so good. But... I, I don't know. Is there consent? Do we have to sign a release form? Is this the new taxi cab confessions? I, 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 I don't, I'm not sure. I, I don't love, I don't, again, I keep bringing up the, as a, that as a, as a musician, but like truly as a musician and somewhat of an introvert, mm -hmm. I hate being put upon for a karaoke situation. Ooh, yeah. I'd rather it be a, 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 a group event. And yeah. this feels like she's f forcing merriment on you. Mm -hmm. And I don't need that if I don't want it. I get it. But I mean, if she asks, can you say like, no, I'm good? So she says... I mean, yes, but not to Linda Swan Fox. Lin How do you say no to Linda Swan? No. Um, she says, I realized that when people got in my car, we weren't going to agree on religion or politics. Red flag, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Yeah. Get out of the car. I know, I know what you're up to. I see your agenda, Linda Swan. <laughs> but music's a uniter and music touches everybody's soul. Okay. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate I that. I do too. Um, but yes, yeah, so I guess she's recording these people on TikTok. That's and different. What's that? That's different. What, recording them? Recording them with with or without their knowledge? That's what I'm kind of wondering. So she says, I really want to make a strong connection with people, so I decided to put lights and cameras in the car. I took a little shoe divider and put microphones and glasses. Oh, wait for it. Throwback, a Michael Jackson glove. There you go. All different kinds of props and instruments, wait. like a cowbell and tambourine. Here's the most important question. What car do you think she drives? Great question. Does it say in the article... I'm get, oh, you're just asking me to yeah, guess. Yeah, well, you, you tell me what car you think she drives. Well, we see a leather interior. I know, but it looks like faux leather. Uh huh. That's true. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge a swan by its cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say this is definitely a Toyota Camry. Oh, really? Mm. I think she. I immediately think she drives a. Ford Explorer, but it's like, oh. but it's like jazzed up with like, you know, princessy, sparkly license plates, uh, uh, decor, uh, decor. It does um, look like an SUV now that you say. It's yeah, gotta it's, be. It's you know big. that woman drives a big car. Yeah, that's a big Florida It's Florida. Car. She wears big Oh, hats. look at her. God she's damn, having a you party. go, Linda. She's having a party. That's Where's a big, she... wide car. Oh, yeah. She's just letting people have a good time. All right, I'm in. I love Linda Linda Swan Fox. <laughs> However, are we, we're team Linda Swan. However, I have questions. You're not saying her full name. Linda Swan Fox. Oh, Linda Swan Fox. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, from the house of Swan Fox. I'm so sorry. She is a hyphenated uh, nature queen. <laughs> Linda Swan Fox, three words. I yeah. love it. Two animals, <laughs> one Linda. I do feel... <laughs> I do feel... Is she allowing drunk passengers in her car? Like, if they're heavily oh, inebriated. Because I feel like if you start seeing it, like, where does she draw the line? Does she care? You know what? I don't think she cares. If she wants, she clearly, like, wants to, like, you know, pal it up with people. Mm -hmm. That'll include drunk people, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. if, if, if she's trying to find a great unifier in Florida, you're going to get... Lots of different folks. Would Elliot do a haunting renditions Uber drive? 
Not without Linda Swan Fox. Yeah, she would be your first passenger. <laughs> yeah, first wait, and only. Wait, what are some of your 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 favorite haunting renditions of? Because what? Yeah. Explain the haunting renditions to the listeners. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically uh, it, I I did it for about ten years. Now I'm kind of moving my live comedy into a slightly different direction, mm-hmm. with, still with music, but a little bit more um, um, genre mashupy. But haunting renditions. It's an, an amassed library of. Um, irreverently arranged versions of pop songs. So mm-hmm. it's not groundbreaking because now with like, after like YouTube and, and TikTok, like this has become more common. But I did start it like, you know, over 10 years ago with a full band. So cool. it's always been a full concert. And so, I mean, the library is very large, but... And always open. Always open. <laughs> the library's <laughs> always open. But, uh, yeah, I, I, there's so much. There's Willa Ford. Uh, <gasps> I Want to Be Bad? <laughs> yeah. How do you sing I Want to Be Bad? With an orchestra. Work. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I went to school for opera initially, so yeah, it's yeah, all based in, in, like, kind of classical ballad stuff. I feel like, because I definitely have a Whatever Happened To playlist, mm, yes. and I have, I mean, if you know, you know, Fifi Dobson. Love Fifi, the uh, Black Avril. Yes, yes. Black Avril. Yes. Take me away. Love her. That one. I mean. Don't, don't think I haven't Googled her to see where she is. I don't want to do that. She's fine. Oh, she's good. Okay. <laughs> she's well. I just, you have to lead with she's that. Well. You're like, she's well. don't, don't no, look. No, she's well. I mean, I mean, one of my, I am trying so hard. Here's Stacey Rico. Mm-hmm. Loves Jesus. I know. A lot. A lot. I know. But I feel like if Linda Swan Fox can do it, <laughs> Stacey Rico, if you don't know Stacey Rico, she's one of my favorite, like, early 2000s. She's great. Po- like, she's great. There's got to be more. She's great. Uh, got to be more to life. Oh, uh, so good. What about Dream? Uh, well, Dream is now in the uh, Fallen Idols documentary about oh, Nick and Aaron no. Carter because Nick Carter allegedly oh, essayed no. the blonde girl from Dream. That sucks, I man. know, and she's in it. She is coming forward and telling her truth and saying I this, this, I love this. Dream. I did too. He loves me not. You love can pouch your cherry dream. lips. I love Dream. Oh, and I'm, you know oh. who I love in Dream? The the spunky, feisty the redhead. redhead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The one who wants you to know she's in the music video. By the way. She's like, I don't know where they're from, but she is- Florida. That, But to me, I was like, as I've gotten older, I'm like, she's every- girl I grew up with on Long Island. Yeah. She is 100% tri-state area <laughs> um, um, vibe. Yes. I mean, there's so many good ones. So I like uh, Vanessa Carlton, Michelle Branch. She's fine. Who? Vanessa Carlton. Where'd she go? She's doing great, I think. Is it's, she? I think she and Michelle Branch might be the same person. Delving in different genres a little bit, but changing their hairs, but being the same person. Mm-hmm. Their styles. Mm-hmm. Their hairstyles. And I feel like that's what was so wonderful about, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, is there was just genres of music. Oh. You had rock and pop and... Well, give me all ethereal. Lilith all day. Oh, Lilith. All the Lilith Fair day. playlist is constantly going on in my playlist. All day. Did I cry missing Sarah McLaughlin at the bowl? Yes. Me too. You I miss was- her? I missed it, but I also could not find anyone to go. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to use my platform to call out my friend, John Hill, because uh, John Hill, he said, I before we knew that Sir McLaughlin was coming to the bowl, like it was announced and he was like, we have to go. And I'm like, yes. And uh, you know John Hill, right? Of yes, course. of course. Yes. Um, we went to high school together. So, oh. I, yeah, so I was like, Sir McLaughlin, she was big in Texas, closeted gays in high school. We were like, I know. Everything. I know. So then he says, hey, I have an extra ticket to go to Sarah McLaughlin if you're in. And I'm like, um, yes. He's like, okay, well, tickets are $75. So I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> and he's like, JK, the ticket's going to somebody else. And uh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, oh, my God. It hurt. That's it unkind. Hurt. It's okay though. We're we're friends, but I was like, oh, it wasn't his that's, say. He was just putting the offer out, and then someone was like, already gave it away. Uh, that's not. His it's fault. not on John Hill, but I no. was like, John, that's that's heartbreak. Yeah, that's heartbreak. It felt like I was Jack Dawson getting let go by Rose, Oof, just and adrift, I was just floating yeah. down to the bottom, You're gone, fumbling towards ecstasy. <laughs> I love her so much, and I used to be like, guys, she's so hot, and everybody was like, okay. <laughs> 
like, calm okay. down. I'm like, no, she's so hot. She's I so just hot. want a bone Sarah McLaughlin. I want McLaughlin. a bone Sarah McLaughlin and a Paul Cole. Oh, oh wow. Everybody was like, we know what you're doing. We know what you're doing. I'll tell you where all the cowboys are in your butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I wished. I sure. I certainly wished. Give me all. Give me a. Um, <laughs> she played here recently too. Paula, Paula Cole. Cole. Yeah, not the bowl, but love her too. Oh, the best Paula Cole song is "You Make Me Want." Yeah, you make me feel love, or the song from City of Angels. Mm, and she, yes, like from the soundtrack. Sexy. It's just like you make me feel like a candy. Apple, She's so good. Red and horny. I'm like, <laughs> unfortunately, oh, it's so good. I think she had a song like no one remembers this album, but she had an album that came out maybe a couple after her big ones, mm-hmm. and she had a song called like it's called like Latanya or something. Where what she, does that mean? It was like her embodying the voice of an inner city woman, and no. I was like, oh, was this her Chris Gaines moment? No, this is just that song. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, no, oh, not no. LaTanya, not LaTanya. It's, well, it's Rachel Dolezal's favorite, <laughs> yeah. favorite song. No, 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 she goes by a different name now. Rachel Dolezal does? Yeah, she she changed by, her name? It's in Keche Diallo. Oh, okay. I know it's because she got famous again after her OnlyFans leaked. <sighs> and she got fired as a teacher. But she goes by in Keche now, so... Good for her. Good for her. That sounds authentic. It, does. it really, really it's true to does. her. Speaking of authentic, here's our last story. Nick Cannon, the father of 12, who does not have a reality show on TLC yet, yet. has insured his testicles for $10 million. Why? Just because. Um, the host of The Mass Singer, Justice for <laughs> Macy Gray. <laughs> Has, he's fathered 12 children with six different women, has taken out an insurance policy on his testicles. Uh, men's personal care brand, Dr. Squatch, which is a soap brand, announced Friday that it had partnered with Canon to take out a $10 million insurance policy through MMA Momentous Insurance. Amid a marketing campaign for their new ball care line, oh Jesus, the LA-based company used its ball valuation tool to assess Canon worth ultimately giving him the honorary title of most valuable balls in the world. Haters say it's time for me to stop having kids and put this super sperm to rest. I never want to hear that sentence Oof. ever I'm not... again. Oof. He says, I'm doubling down on these valuable balls and my future kids. What, 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 is it, what does it mean to put insurance on a body part? Like, what, is that, I, what does that actually mean? Well, I know J-Lo did her butt. Right, but what does that mean? Like, if it gets... Injured? Hurt? Yeah. You get paid out? I think so. I have um, my hair insured. <laughs> yeah. In case somebody comes to you with a, with a... Oh, yeah. Like in the middle of the night? A razor? Yeah. No! My life! My life! Um, he thanked Dr. Squatch for giving my balls the credit they deserve and hooking me up with the protection I need to keep this family tree rolling. Bitch, you need to start wearing it's, protection. It's a sickness. It's I mean, so him weird. And hilari- hil- I call her Hilarious Baldwin. She's Hilarious Baldwin. <laughs> it's a sickness. Hilarious Ball. Dwin. <laughs> the, Cannon. Like, 12 kids, 8 kids. Dwin. Ca- Dwin uh, dash Cannon. It's so bizarre. I, I, I really do think it's like there's an, there's an illness uh-huh. when you have... That many? Yeah, like in a world that's overpopulated already. Mm -hmm. And where, forget about that. Birthing a child, having a child, raising a child seems like an enormous responsibility. And there's so much, your your life changes. And he has 11 of them. 13. 13. And one of them's named Zillion. He's right? His twins. He's got, I mean, legendary. He's just like picking names out of a hat at this point because we've got Mixolydian. Zion Mixolydian. Beautiful. Beautiful Zeppelin. That's like I'm sorry, but that sounds like a joke. But a child is a child who's like every step is going to be shouldered by the burden of being named Beautiful Zeppelin. Yeah, that's crazy. So you know what we're saying <laughs> this Father's Day, guys? <laughs> step it up. Step it up. Wrap it up. Be man. a better father and wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> and get that cozy earth discount. C E slash Justin or C E dash Justin. That's it. Well, Elliot, thank you so much. Thank Did you, you have fun? Me. Oh, what a blast! It was, it was great. really fun. You have thank to come you. back. I'd love please, to. Please love please, to. Please. Um, please tell everyone where you are, like where they can follow you, what you got coming up. I am all planning that stuff. a tour at the moment, so there will be dates announced soon. But you can listen to my podcast. You're making it worse. Yes. Um, I will be on after midnight this Wednesday. Okay. Um, on CBS and um, uh, just. 
following every move Hilarious Baldwin <laughs> makes. Absolutely. <laughs> waiting for that show. Oh, uh, waiting for that show. <laughs> oh my God, I can't wait. Well, thank you so much for being oh, here. And as always, we will see you guys next time. Make sure to rate, subscribe, review, all that stuff. And we will see you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Have a great week. Mm-hmm.